Today, we will use a scientific perspective to explore the complex truth behind meteorological events. According to the latest news from the British Sky News website, at around 16.33 local time on the afternoon of Wednesday, January 3rd, the tranquility of Notre Dame Cathedral in Wavre, Antwerp Province, Belgium was broken. A severe tornado struck the area, causing severe damage. In its wake, it left a trail of violent destruction, with trees uprooted, buildings damaged and debris scattered across the area. Later that day, another tornado occurred between St. Catherine Weaver and Putty in Belgium, causing severe damage and leaving a trail of destruction stretching for four kilometers. The local police district confirmed that the tornado ripped off roofs from homes within about four kilometers and destroyed a large greenhouse. Some shacks were also blown to pieces and Putt Cemetery was damaged. A total of 40 homes were damaged, two of which have been declared uninhabitable. Residents found shelter with relatives. Firefighters managed to secure structures in most areas again Wednesday evening. Local police urged to avoid the area around Waver St. Catherine, where many vehicles were damaged. The municipality of Waver St. Catherine reported that roofs were torn off and rubble was scattered across the area, affecting about 40 houses, two of which are now uninhabitable. Thank you for liking, leaving comments, subscribing and turning on the little bell, we will update every day. A large amount of glass and debris littered bike paths and carriageways along the Putty region of Belgium, but Putty's technical department cleared it away later in the evening. During the day, the police district further assessed the damage and took necessary action. The hardest hit were local growers. One of them, Polonko, suffered serious losses, destroying 40 years of cultivation in just a few minutes. Agnes, the wife of grower Paul, confirmed that one greenhouse was completely destroyed, with severe structural collapse and widespread shattering of glass. While grower Polonko was the worst affected horticulture company, the tornado's impact was varied and some nearby greenhouses escaped unscathed, highlighting the localized nature of the damage. Rescue crews and insurance companies entered the area the next day, but the danger of falling glass and structural instability made repairs and cleanup difficult. Five French departments, Nord, Ain, Ardennes, Meuse and Merthmoselle, on the border with Belgium are on orange alert for water overflows. Belgian meteorologists confirmed that the extreme weather north of Antwerp was a tornado, which is relatively rare in Belgium. Recently, extreme weather has occurred frequently in Europe, and we have tracked and reported on tornado events in many countries. Among them, on November 21st, we reported on a series of tornadoes in Italy. At that time, tornadoes struck the mainland more than a dozen times from the sea. This dangerous and spectacular scene frightened many residents. Rugged rocks, picturesque coves. The Amalfi Coast south of Naples is one of Italy's most stunning tourist attractions. Between 15 and 20 such giant waterspouts were recorded in the town alone that afternoon, and about 12 of them are said to have reached the coast. Among them is the Amalfi Coast where Naples is the capital of the province. The second waterspout of the day was filmed forming in waters near the port city of Salerno. Powerful, towering whirlpools can be seen swirling toward coastal communities. Local tourists did not bother to take photos and check in, and used their mobile phones to record this spectacular scene. Italy has been hit by a number of tornadoes in recent months, including one that ripped through Maiori and Capo di Orso. Local media reported that it was lucky that there were no houses near the land. Then, the people of Salerno shivered in front of the tornado. Fortunately, the tornado stopped right in front of the port. 
If it had continued deep inland, it would have caused unimaginable damage and losses. Videos of tornadoes have been circulating on social media, causing widespread discussion. Frequent extreme weather has also frightened local residents. Around the world, some countries are frequently hit by tornadoes due to their special geographical features. First is the United States. The Great Plains region of the central United States is known as the Tornado Trail, with frequent tornadoes in the spring and summer. This area is located at the intersection of warm and humid air from the Gulf of Mexico and cold northern currents, and is prone to extreme weather. The United States ranks first in the world in terms of absolute losses and casualties from tornado disasters. Secondly, there is Bangladesh. The northern part of the country is low-lying and has records of tornadoes for hundreds of years. Affected by the terrain, most of them belong to the strong T6 level and above. Because of the dense population, each disaster causes a large number of casualties. At the same time, northeastern Japan and offshore islands are also major prone areas. In recent years, the incidence of tornadoes has increased significantly across the country, with the Northeast accounting for about 65%. Most tornadoes in Japan are short-lived but destructive. In addition, tornadoes often occur in areas such as the Ganges Plain in northern India, with the most serious disasters in populous provinces such as Uttar Pradesh and Bihar. Most tornadoes in India occur during the warm-up thunderstorm period from March to May. What cannot be ignored is Canada. Similar to the neighboring United States, frequent tornadoes occur in southern Canada and other places. It mainly threatens Ontario, Saskatchewan and other provinces. Eastern Canada has fewer but more damaging tornadoes. It is worth mentioning that tornadoes or dust devils often occur in the central Siberian plain of Russia. Regional tornadoes mostly occur in June and July. Due to poor infrastructure, disaster losses are high. It is worth noting that Pakistan, the northeastern plains of the country can also induce tornado weather under the influence of monsoons and remnant tropical cyclones. It mostly occurs from March to October, and mostly occurs suddenly between evening and midnight. Even more special is Australia. Cirrus clouds occasionally occur in southeastern Australia, most typically in northern Queensland. Most of its tornadoes are storm-level or medium-sized. In South America, there are sporadic tornado-prone areas in the central plains of Argentina. Local tornadoes mainly occur in spring and summer and are also indistinguishable from dust storms. In fact, the formation mechanism of tornadoes is relatively complex. First, in terms of aerodynamic conditions, the formation of a tornado requires significant instability to provide fuel. Typically in spring and summer, land warms faster than oceans with air masses over continents being warmer while air from the oceans remains cooler. When the temperature difference reaches more than 10 degrees Celsius, instability will occur in the lower layers. This creates conditions for the development of strong updrafts. Secondly, forced upward motion is the second key factor in tornado generation. Updrafts mainly come from two aspects, first, the wind shear generated by the Great Central Mountains of North America. These towering mountains force westerly winds to rise sharply, second, the developed storm zones and the strong convective updrafts they generate are the most direct driving force. These airflows create rotational motion as they rise. In addition, the presence of high wind shear is also extremely important. 
In a tornado area, the wind speed near the surface is slower, but the jet wind speed at high altitude can exceed 150 km per hour. This strong vertical wind shear will generate and amplify vorticity, contributing to the formation of vortex funnels. The location and intensity of wind shear are critical to tornado formation. Therefore, under the combined effect of the above complex mechanisms, if the rotating funnel is strong enough to extend to the ground, accompanied by extreme pressure changes and buoyancy effects, an extremely destructive tornado will be produced. The entire process takes only a few minutes from the cloud to the ground. Generally speaking, Areas that are frequently hit and damaged by tornadoes are mainly concentrated in areas with similar geographical features. The first is the inland plain or basin terrain. The Great Plains of the central United States and the plains of Eastern Europe are easily accessible areas for tornadoes to land and wreak havoc due to their open terrain and lack of barriers of mountains and rivers. In spring and summer in such areas, warm and humid air meets the northern cold current, providing dynamic conditions for the generation of tornadoes. Next are inland areas near large bodies of water or oceans. For example, areas in the central and southern United States facing the Gulf of Mexico and the northern side of the Bay of Bengal. The continuous transport of water vapor provided by large bodies of water can make the air more unstable. Local circulation caused by the temperature difference between sea and land can also easily oh become a trigger for tornadoes. What is more critical is the area where the basin and the mountainous area connect. Mountains produce vertical shear of airflow and cause air masses to converge and transport between valleys, exacerbating convective instability. These terrain edges are areas where tornadoes are most likely to occur. It should be noted that the above three types of geographical features often overlap, which greatly increases the risk of regional tornado disasters. Regardless of disaster records or meteorological mechanisms, they are tornado hotspots. When a tornado occurs, it is crucial to take timely evasive measures. First, seek shelter in a pre-identified shelter. For most ordinary houses, basements, bunkers or sunken garages are the best places to take refuge. First of all, most of these locations are below the ground, which is helpful for avoiding external splashes. Secondly, the cement walls can also withstand the impact of flying objects produced by some tornadoes. You need to confirm in advance which buildings around your community or work area have such shelters. Enter as soon as possible before the tornado strikes, close the doors and entrances, and wait for the storm to pass. In addition, the underground spaces of some specific public buildings, such as schools, gymnasiums, and subway stations, can also be used as refuge points. Secondly, take shelter in low-lying areas. If it is too late to escape into a building shelter, look for natural barriers such as low-lying ravines, mountain depressions, or behind roadside retaining walls. Then choose a location away from large trees, telephone poles, and other places that may produce flying objects. Lie down and curl up. Protect your head and neck with your hands to reduce direct exposure of your body. If you have a coat, blanket, etc., you can also cover yourself to cushion the impact. Wait for the tornado to completely pass through before leaving. During the evacuation process, Pay attention to the risks of secondary disasters such as floods and mudslides around you. In addition, be alert to surrounding danger sources. Whether you are inside a building or sheltering in place, you must fully understand and stay away from surrounding collapse risk points. If you are in the woods, be aware of large trees above your head that may break. 
When approaching telephone poles and street signs, be aware that they may collapse on you after being struck by a tornado. In addition, inside the building, be sure to keep a certain distance from glass windows and doors to avoid being scratched by broken glass fragments damaged by the storm. What cannot be ignored is the need to adopt a safe method when escaping by car. If you are driving, do not attempt to erase a tornado. When facing strong winds, slow down your vehicle speed, stop on the side of the road, and quickly seek refuge in a roadside building or under an overpass. If you really can't find a shelter, you should also fasten your seat belt and use blankets and clothing to cover your head and potentially exposed parts of your body. Also be careful of secondary disasters such as deep water accumulation and landslides. It is worth mentioning that attention should be paid to the risk of water accumulation in low-lying areas such as rivers and under bridges. Tornadoes are often accompanied by heavy rain or thunderstorms. Therefore, water levels in low-lying areas such as river banks, lakesides, downstream of dams, and bridge openings are likely to surge in a short period of time. If you are trapped near these locations, be sure to evacuate to a higher and safer place in advance to avoid drowning accidents. Generally speaking, tornado protection must follow certain architectural design principles. First, pay attention to the wind resistance of the building structure itself. The concrete and steel structure skeleton should be selected as the windproof backbone. The structural walls should be thick enough, and the steel bars and connectors should be strong to ensure that the hole can withstand strong external impacts. In addition, indoor supports such as beams and diagonal braces are designed to enhance the rigidity against wind pressure. The overall structure of the building should also be symmetrical and concise to reduce the area of air vents. Secondly, we should make good use of the windproof partition function of large bay doors and windows. Use double layer or triple layer hollow glass curtain walls and install windproof roller shutters or steel plates on both indoor and outdoor sides to close and fix before the storm approaches. Leave appropriate space in the hollow layer to buffer wind pressure shock waves. Glass surface treatments also enhance bullet and crack resistance. More importantly, attention should be paid to the fine windproof design of the roof structure. The overall roof should not be too complex and changeable to avoid becoming a wind outlet. It adopts a single inclined surface and is simple and streamlined. The waterproof layer and truss layer must be paved firmly. The roofing materials are preferably light steel, stone fiberboard, etc. Air ducts, skylights, and landscape protrusions should be converged and simplified to reduce wind catching points. What cannot be ignored is the protective interference design of underground spaces and bunkers. Appropriately increase the area on the first or two underground floors of the building and reserve living supplies for long-term shelter. The walls are strong and the entrances and exits are windproof and waterproof. Necessary supporting facilities such as ventilation and lighting should be complete and an independent power supply system should be preset to prevent power outages. It is worth mentioning that attention should be paid to windproof design in the surrounding environment of the building. Distribution lines are buried underground and windproof joints are added to pipelines. Windbreak forest belts are planted and wind-resistant tree species are selected, windbreak walls and flower beds are added, and surface roughness is increased to slow down wind speed. Rooftop landscaping also has a windproof and decelerating effect. In addition, in areas with a high incidence of tornadoes, urban planning should also follow necessary disaster prevention principles. First of all, in the layout of functional zoning, 
a decentralized and staggered model should be adopted. Industrial areas, commercial areas, residential areas, etc. should not be too concentrated or arranged in long strips, which can easily create huge air vents. Set up a certain width of urban park green space between each functional area to buffer and reduce wind, and facilitate the evacuation of people. Secondly, the urban road network should be designed into a high-density grid, the road width should be uniform, and the block size should be controlled within 300 to 500 meters. This is very important for the rapid evacuation of people and vehicles when a storm approaches. The main road adopts an elevated or cutting design to prevent local water accumulation. More importantly, the building layout should be controlled to keep high-rise buildings and important facilities away from the edge of the city to prevent the windward side from suffering strong impacts. Low-rise simple buildings are arranged around the perimeter to regulate the wind environment at the urban boundary. High-rise buildings can be appropriately arranged in the central area to avoid strong wind fields on the top floor. It is worth mentioning that all types of tornado public shelters must be reasonably and adequately laid out, focusing on densely populated areas and unified into the ground wind protection guidance system, such as signs, guide signs, etc. It is also necessary to provide supporting facilities such as windproof partitions and backup power supplies in these places. What cannot be ignored is that retaining or restoring a certain proportion of open natural patterns such as wetlands and woodlands in the urban periphery area can play a buffering role against tornadoes and can significantly slow down the wind field speed and vortex intensity. This is a natural barrier to tornado defense. At present, in key areas, it is necessary to take special preventive measures against tornado disasters. First, we need to strengthen meteorological monitoring and early warning. Using multi-point weather radar monitoring and sounding balloon wind measurement, the onset of tornadoes can be detected early. Cooperate with big data analysis to achieve accurate prediction and risk division of extreme weather, gaining one to six hours of valuable preparation time for disaster prevention. Secondly, we must improve the disaster prevention and evacuation system. Governments at all levels should work with communities to comprehensively identify tornado shelters such as basements, subway stations, and gymnasiums, and calculate the number of people they can accommodate. Equipped with the installation of independent power supply and communication facilities, and the storage of certain daily necessities. Formulate detailed disaster response plans and conduct in-depth publicity. At the same time, the wind resistance of infrastructure must be strengthened. Lightweight materials are used for telephone poles and street signs, and the anchorage is strengthened on the ground. Civil buildings should fully adopt the design concept of wind prevention and disaster reduction, and improve the wind resistance level from details such as location layout, spatial structure to door, window, and wall materials. Major public buildings meet the highest wind protection standards. Thank you for liking, leaving a message, subscribing and turning on the little bell. We will update the latest news from around the world every day. Continue to use a scientific perspective to explore the complex truth behind meteorological events.